Hey guys, what's happening? So, I'm doing a lot of radio testing recently, and um, I noticed like one of my radios was acting kind of weird, like it was like shutting off when it was given a transmit power. Um, so I've actually had this bench power supply for like 15 years probably, and I actually started making this video and I the footage got all messed up, so kind of recreate it, but um, so this is a linear regulated power supply. So you have your large transformer, and then it goes into the regulation circuit. The reg regulation circuit is supposed to keep it at a constant voltage. So this power supply is 13.8 volts, so it's supposed to say it at 13.8 volts. So you kind of have the best, well, I mean, if you think about it, it's not a switching power supply, but you kind of have the best of both worlds because you have linear, but then you also have sort of like switching because you can you're regulating the power. Um, yeah, I couldn't find any schematics online of this thing, so there's, there's some unique features of it that seems like, I don't know, did they not have a voltage regulator back then? Um, let me show you the circuit. So I've already replaced the capacitors. These things were kind of out of spec a little bit. So the thing is 15 years old, so it's time to replace them anyways. Um, so you replace the capacitors, the main filtering capa DC filtering capacitors. Then you have your four, uh, that's your rectifier right there. The four diodes, that's what it converts it from AC to DC. And then on all the other power supplies similar to this, I didn't, they only had one trimmer pot. And where this has two trimmer pods, you replace these. So I, I've already tested the, uh, what's it called, the driver, all the different little transistors in here. So I've tested those. They seem to work fine. I did find an extra driver transistor on my uh, one of my extra extra boards. I keep like a box of spare boards. So I've kind of tested. I've gone through and I tested all the resistors. And the only thing I haven't replaced, I'm going to go to a Marvac right now and get another one of these right here. And that seems like it's okay, but I don't know. I mean, I'm getting 18 volts from the from the what's it called? And then once it's DC converted, I get about 24 volts. Um, but the regulation, like I said, this seems like a... It seems like there's a much easier way of doing it. If you just create a, use a voltage regulator, I don't think you, you could... I don't know. You, I don't think you need all these transistors. Maybe it's cheaper to do this way? I'm not sure. All right, let's see if this thing's in power. Yeah, it's kind of all over the place. So now it's 15... It's really just every all over the place. Like it, sometimes it goes full tilt at eighteen volts, all right? Um, fifteen. See that sixteen, seventeen. It just it's just, it's really just it's like everywhere. So it's not safe to hook up my radios, my expensive radios, so this thing to test them. So let me put this thing under a load real fast. Something I really don't care about burning out. But some of these radios I'm, I'm going to be working on, and I need, I need to, I mean, I could use this other bench supply over here, but I want to use this one. It's already set for 13.8. Um, let me just grab one of these little cheaper radios. I don't know exactly how this thing works, but I think it, the Zener diode basically is uh, activating this thing. So when it's, once it gets to a certain voltage, it allows voltage to pass, pass through. Um... Yeah, I've already, like I said, I've tested everything. I've tested resistors, tested all the capacitors, new capacitors. I mean, I've actually individually pulled, I desoldered and pulled out the transistors and tested them individually. They look fine. All the diodes work fine. Even the Zener diodes, I, I, I mean, I couldn't, to do a, a real test with Zener diode, you got to pull it out and do a voltage test on it. But, you know, the diode function was actually working. I just didn't test the actual voltage because I don't know what the voltage is. 13.8? Not sure. Don't have a schematic, so I'm just trying to figure it out. Um, okay, I turn this on. So that's really high. <laughs> 16 volts. Well, it should be 13.8 volts. Watch this. Okay, 13.3. But the other day, what's funny is that it's so random and everywhere that it was went down to seven the other day as I'm transmitting. I mean, it can handle 15 volts because you gotta remember this stuff is designed to be in a car, which you know swings wildly from about 11, 11 volts on a low battery to like up to like 14, 14.5 volts. 
you know, max alt there. And so now I'm up to 17. So see this? It's just everywhere. It's all over the place. Alright, I don't know, man. Alright, I'm gonna go get that transistor. It's only four dollars over at Marvac. The main so this is not it doesn't run a actually I don't wanna put this. See now it's on a fourteen, see? It's just all over the place. I hope you can see my multimeter. Yeah, so the saying is it's it's all over the place. It's not regulating the voltage. So under transmit. All right, so I mean, the only thing I really haven't tested yet was this. Like I said, it's either I'm thinking at this point it's either a bad Zener diode or that main uh, power transistor is not working right. So this is not a MOSFET. It's it's a it's called a power transistor. Uh, a MOSFET you typically see on switching power supply, uh, high frequency switching on and off, pulse modulation. All right. Um, All right, so these pots, I noticed that when I was first messing with them, they weren't really doing much. So that's why I thought there was something wrong with the regulation circuit. But I put all this deoxid on there, the DL, D100L. This stuff's incredible. Um, on, the, on the pots, I twist them back and forth to kind of get it worked in there. It seems to be a lot more stable now. But, like, it's supposed to be 13.8 volts. So I'm at 14.13 under a load. Yeah, I don't know, that's odd. Like I said, I went through and I tested every component in here. So, I couldn't find a back component, but I didn't, I, I didn't, the one thing I didn't test was that the main, main, uh, the main uh, power transistor. So what happens is, this little transistor, the, the power transistor, powers the larger one. So that's all it's really doing. It's just basically, you know, offloading to the to the larger uh, transistor. So let this run for a while, see what happens. Like I said, I want to hook up one of my expensive radios to this thing, and have it go. Have it, you know, because you know what's weird is, what you guys in the first part of the video, maybe I'll upload it if I can find it. This thing was going full tilt, 18 volts. Guys, right, so I've been letting this go for a while. It just thing just, just just drifts everywhere. Hmm. Alright, so I did get another transistor. This is actually made by Phillips. This was actually this cross-reference. This looks like it was an old copy of an old Toshiba. Um, it's a D717, so I think it was SC2 SC D717. So this was equivalent. And then uh, NTE makes one too, the NTE390. This is ECG 390, so this is a new old stock because I know they don't make this anymore, so. All right, so this is actually a thermally insulated transistor, so that means this metal part can't touch this. It can't be grounded out or it will short out. That's actually why they included one of these little uh, plastic spacers, but you can see this one here is also, so it protects the screw from actually contacting the metal here. All right, got the transistor in there. I got the, I'm sure got a cover in the thermal paste, I'll clean it off, but, um, <clears throat> so I put a new uh, CPU thermal paste in there, so, I, in case this thing pops, yeah, it's new old stock, but in case there's, even though I, I didn't read the specs right, I didn't cross right, got my, did it explode or not, oh. <laughs> there you go, take a look, all right, so that's what it's supposed to be. See right there? 13.95. Right? Yeah, it was like drifting everywhere. It went from 18, 8, 17, 18 volts to like, yeah, even like a couple times when I was transmitting on this thing, the test transmit, it was getting down to 7 volts. Yeah, it was drifting everywhere. So, cool thing is it cost me about $12 in parts. Uh, I mean, I replaced. So, what I did, it, I, I deoxed the uh, pots here. Um, I replaced the capacitors and replaced the transistor, so about 12 bucks. Um, I think these are, were, um, 
I think they're, you know, I mean, now they're like 50 bucks, somewhere in there, so. Um, but at least I know when I, I replace it with quality components, so not like little cheapo components. I mean, I even mean, know NTE is not, who knows where NTE actually makes their stuff, but. Or it's a Jack, Jack own. I don't know, they're NTE branded, so I, I think NTE might just, I'm not sure if they go the cheapest route, but I know the transistor is Philips. So I'm going to clean off some of the thermal paste and actually before I do that, let's test this thing. Alright, so I guess the true test is to see if the thing will retain. So it's 13.95, which is, the, I mean, I could trim the pot down if I wanted it a little bit. Um, as long as it's in car alternator range. So that's what you expect a regulated power supply to do. It was actually more like a linear power supply, which is odd, you know? Like an unregulated power supply. Linear unregulated power supply. Let's transmit. I mean, you expect a little bit of voltage drop. I mean, I'm putting out four watts of power. So, you see that? All right, awesome. Fix for 12 bucks. Yeah, the cool thing is, uh, I mean, actually, more than the $12, actually, it helped me learn all about these regulated linear power supplies, but I never knew it in that much in depth. So now, now I know. So, all right, cool.